We drove into Pickle Lake, Ontario last night, which is located in the Superior region of Ontario. We woke up this morning, and we're getting on a float plane, and we're heading to Birch Bark Lodge. We've been to Birch Bark before, and you know what? People go put back to places year after year. They build traditions, and that's exactly what we've done with Birch Bark. We know the fishing's great. The people are outstanding there. Mike and Kim are awesome hosts. You know what? We were here a few years ago. I filmed a show with uh, Jeremy Smith for Linder's Angling Edge, and we caught a huge northern pike. We caught some great walleyes. We came back again a couple years ago. We fished to the Ontario Experience Show here, too. Again, the fishing was second to none when it comes to walleyes. We caught a nice, couple nice pike, too. We're going back. We're jumping on a float plane, Birch Bark Lodge. Hey, I've been fishing in Ontario for well over 40 years and have some great fishing memories, not to mention some very close friends. Ontario has some of the best multi-species freshwater fishing in the world. Ontario has a special place in my heart. The Ontario Experience captures all of this and more as hosts Troy Linder and Ty Shadeen explore new places, meet some authentic characters, and experience world-class fishing and hunting along the way. The Ontario Experience is the next best thing to going on the adventure yourself. And who knows, this unique show just might give you some ideas for your next fishing or hunting trip. I couldn't have been more excited for this trip. From my departure in Minnesota, my adrenaline was on overload. And the short drive to Pickle Lake Airways gave me time to think about the awesome walleye fishing to come. After you arrive in Pickle Lake, it's a short flight out here to the lodge. You'll notice how really remote you are as you're flying out. You won't see any roads, any power lines. You get here, you land, and it's just complete solitude. The wind, the birds, the trees, the fishing, it's just a very, very relaxing trip. When we purchased it, uh, it didn't really have a name, so Kim did some research and uh, found out the lake name Wigwasins means birch bark or birch tree, so we named it Birch Bark Lodge. We just flew into Birch Bark Lodge this morning, had an awesome lunch. Now we're heading out to do some fishing. You know, the beautiful thing about coming back to a place you've already been, you know, a lot of people come back year after year, they start traditions, they, and the great thing about that is you typically know where the fish are. So I've got six, eight spots here on Wigwasins that I know there's walleyes. And if they're not there, that's why the beauty of coming up here with a portable Helix 7 is you can go find them. We're only typically fishing six to 12 feet of water for these walleyes. So they're not that difficult to find. So we're gonna go to one spot that I know I have caught so many walleyes, I'll be super shocked if they're not there. You know what the beauty of that is? is there's also a big pike there too. So let's get going and uh, catch our first few fish of the day. There we go. There's a walleye. You know, these river systems, it's like no other, right? I mean, it's like you, they come out of here and you, you find these humps that come up in the, these just, it comes up in the system. And typically, especially if there's rock, there's probably gonna be walleye. Look at that. Another birch bark walleye, the first of this trip. Look how pretty those are. And if that's not the perfect size shore lunch fish, I don't know what is. What a nice start to the day. We've just been out here for about five minutes. Got our first one. I have a feeling we're going to catch a bunch more. So he's going to go back. There we go. We're over the same spot again. Cover a lot of ground, go back and forth. What this is right here is just a, it's a hump that comes up again in the middle of the, this little river system of Wick Lawson. And they are absolutely loaded up here. We go over there, you can see the marks as you go over them on your helix. It's a nicer fish. Oh, look at this. Right this one. Oh, there we go. There's an, another nice birch bark walleye. Look at that. Caught up in the net. Beautiful thing is. You don't lose too many on crankbaits, that's for sure. Look at that. Tell you what, we've been out here for no more than five minutes and already two beautiful walleyes. And again, 
Because we're on a system that we've, we've been to before, it's nice because we can go back to spots that we know very well. And even like we went to a spot earlier, they weren't there, we can cruise up to another spot. It's kind of your milk run. So you get walleye after walleye. There's just so many walleyes in the system. There's a lot at this size, and there's some really big ones. We were up here a couple years ago, and we got some real dandies. So they're a mixture of walleyes you can eat while you're here, walleyes you can take home, and walleyes you can release. So we're out to a good start. Like I said, we haven't been fishing for five minutes, but we're covering some ground with crankbaits, catching walleyes at Birch Park Lodge. Let's get her back. This segment is brought to you by Tourism Northern Ontario. There we go. There we go. Oh, I think smoked it. This might be a this might be a nice walleye or a decent pike. Just the way it hit it. Nope. I think it's just a nice walleye. Yeah, it's a nice wall I came up, but it absolutely pounded this crankbait. Shad wraps are so awesome. Walleyes love them. People have been using them for years. Look at that guy. Look at there. Let me tell you what. Shad wraps are one of my favorite all-time baits to use for walleye. They're just they're just a fish catching machine. I just can't believe how well they do on walleyes. And you know what? Up here at Birch Park, it's no different. Look at how fat these fish are. You can tell me that there's, they're not eating. Just a beautiful fish. To be quite honest, they don't get much better eating either. Beautiful fish, they're active. We're up here in the fall, catching walleye after walleye. I mean, they've got their feed bags on, so getting ready for winter. And they are absolutely munching on these, on these baits. So much fun. Oh, there, there it goes. Let me tell you what, when you're talking about crankbaits, so we're, again, as I stated earlier on when we just left, we're going to be fishing six to 12 feet of water, and these shad wraps go the perfect depth, but you could actually see the bill of that shad wrap is getting so tore up, and what it's doing is, it's actually hitting these rocks as we're going over the top of them, and it's really triggering that bite too, because those walleyes are are keying in on that and they're coming up and absolutely crushing the bait. That one smoked it. But the, it's the sound, it's the wobble. And again, look at the, the bill on that thing. That's why you want to bring a few baits because you might, just because of the, the fact that you're hitting a lot of rocks and you're hitting them hard, because we're going probably one, one and a half to two miles an hour. And it's really hitting these rocks. And after a while, it's like anything, it's going to break. But it's definitely holding up so far. But you want it to really hit that bottom and it's key, the, the fish are keen on it, keen in on that, so it's definitely working. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> we go far. <laughs> this might be another northern, but there's a lot of fish in this spot. Look at that. Yes, it is. A little bit better. Not a giant, but there we go. <laughs> Better fish. And you know what? If you're going to come up here and actually eat pike, like I do, I love to eat northern pike, especially when they're this size. Oh man, that thing was not getting off there. And if you're going to eat some pike, like I like to do, because I think pike meat is. Some of the firmest, most delicious meat out there, just like walleye is, but this is the ideal size. So, I mean, this isn't a giant, but if you like to eat fish, and I do, this is a great, great size pike to, to eat. And you know, once you debone it, it's so delicious. That wide bone comes out and the meat is just, I mean, it's all meat, no bone. So it's, it's if you figure out how to do the deboning process, it really is a really easy deal to do, but meat is awesome. This segment is brought to you by Go Fish Ontario Canada. <laughs> Just marked fish and guess what? I caught fish. <laughs> 
Might be another pike. There we go. There we go. Not a big one, but again, just a lot of action out here. Not only walleyes, but northerns. I just I just went over a mark and I go, I bet you we get hit. Sure enough, crushed it. And they are, they don't mess around, they eat. They don't just nibble, they eat it. Fun fish to catch. So I, no matter if I'm using, the, especially walleye, when I'm fishing walleyes, I always use a fluorocarbon leader. This is 17 pound fluorocarbon from Suffix, but if you look at that really close, you can see the fray right there and right there from the pikes just engulfing these walleye baits. If I would have had a, just a braid or a regular mono, that bait right there would be gonzo. Because you, you, you have that fluorocarbon leader, it's so strong, you don't have to worry about, you'll lose some, right? But chances are you're gonna lose a lot less. Look at that fish would have ate that bait and that bait have been gone. And uh, you have to, that's why you bring a bunch of baits up, but you also be smart and use a fluorocarbon leader because it, it makes a big difference when it comes to when you're fishing walleyes and catching these tule creatures when you're doing it. The nice thing is I got a nice little leader and I still got plenty of fluorocarbon to retie. I mean, you don't need a long, long leader. Still got plenty to tie it back on and I'm right back in the game. So we're uh, second day at Birch Park Lodge. As you can see, it's a beautiful mid-September day in Superior Country of Ontario. Unbelievable. It's about 80 degrees here in the middle of September. Very uh, balmish for up here this time of year. But uh, last time I came up here, Kim and I had a little competition, walleye fishing. I think I may have, in my mind, may have got her by one walleye. So she wanted retribution. She said, let's go do it again. Kim's a lot of fun to go fishing with. She loves to fish. She's the owner of Birch Park Lodge along with her husband, Mike. We love coming up and visiting and uh, spending some time in the boat with her. So uh, we're going to go catch some walleyes. Well, I think we went out twice and I beat him the first time. And it was the second time that he beat me. I don't know what the total was, but he might be right. It might be one. I don't know. <laughs> we'll go with that. We'll go with that. There we go. That's a fish, I think. Oh, yeah. That's a big yeah? fish. Really? Yeah, really? That's a big fish. Yeah. Woo! All right. I'll reel in. That might be a big one there. <laughs> you can tell by the head shake. Yeah. Ty's got a big fish. I wanted the big fish, but this will be fun. What I was doing is, what I started doing yesterday, it was kind of funny, is I would see marks and what I'd do is I'd cast behind it because I was kind of trucking along pretty fast. I'd see a mark and I would slow down and I would chuck this rip and wrap behind us and I would just, every time I would do that, I was just catching fish. I thought, well, that's kind of cool. So I started doing that again today. This one's got, I think it's big. Oh, I, no, oh, it's a walleye. It's not giant, but it's, uh, I got it snagged, that's why it feels a little uh, bigger. Ah, yes. Hopefully she doesn't knock it off. And she didn't, because that ties it up, Kim. <laughs> nice fish, okay. though, nice All walleye. Right. Actually, what happens? is that thing swiped at it. And it's still got hooked, which is why well, having a couple of treble hooks is nice on these lures. Let me just, uh, Kim, you got that pliers yep. up there? Thank you. I'm hooked and get them back in there. Oh, there we go. There's a nicer fish. Look at that. Beautiful walleye. Whoa. Look at that. 
beautiful gold. Look at that. You know, if that's what it's all about, you know, here at Birch Park, Kim knows because she's the owner, but this is what sells their popcorn and gets people coming back time after time. They've got really nice pike in this lake, but I think the walleyes are really what brings people back. Eating shore lunch, taking a few home, but the action is non-stop. So you get this back and catch a few more, huh, Kim? Yes. There she goes. There she goes. I'm gonna get the next one. There's a fish. Yep, what's a fish? Doesn't feel like a northern, but you know what? It might be a small one. Get the other net there, Missy. Okay. Hey, walleye. walleye. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, look, I'm gonna grab the fish. Yeah, grab the line and the fish. Uh, I think this one ties. <laughs> ties, ties. Ties, tie. True or false, walleye color can vary depending on ecological conditions. If you guess true, you're right on. While most walleyes are yellow, gold, greenish, or black with a white belly, walleyes can take on various colors. So what causes these color variations? It's actually a combination of walleye biology and outside factors. The response of walleye pigments and proteins to water clarity and mineral makeup and prefer diet, depth, and habitat. Wow, that's a lot. Definitely some fascinating stuff. Oh, there's one. I don't think it's very big, but it's a fish. And I oh, think... Can you count that? That really? is a fish that takes the lead. <laughs> I'm just saying, it doesn't have to be big to be a walleye. <laughs> it's uh, more about taking the lead over Kim. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. This one's got a little more heft to it. A little more zip yeah. to it. Oh, he's probably tired from fighting. Yeah, right. <laughs> Come here. Oh, it's a sauger. Oh, wow. Nice yeah. sauger, too. Nice sauger. Wow. Here goes the players. There you go. Wow, that's a nice sauger. Beautiful. See the difference? You got no white tail. Get the spots on the fin on the dorsal. Just sauger and a walleye. Oh, tie. Beautiful. I don't know. Can you do that? That doesn't really count though, it's not a lot. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just get that big pike. There we go. Oh, no! <laughs> it's a pike. It's a pike. I think it might be. Okay, good. <laughs> See, if it's a pike, it doesn't count. It's a walleye. It's a walleye. No, no, it's a walleye. No, 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 no. Oh, but it's such a small I got a walleye hole. and Kim. <laughs> Look at it. Great. Hey, hey. And that concludes part one of the competition. And I do believe Team Shodeen <laughs> has the lead. With baby walleyes, it I, I might say that. Hey, Look at the stick up front. <laughs> that was fun, you know, first day of uh, Kim and I fishing together. I think we'll probably do it again tomorrow. It's supposed to be another really nice day. It's fun to come out and uh, share a bunch of lifts with Kim because uh, <laughs> she caught some sticks and a lot of pike. And we both caught walleye, so it was a ton of fun. Go do it again tomorrow, huh, Kim? Yes, we Let's will. Let's go have some supper. Yes. Sweet. One more day. <laughs> Retribution. Woo. I'm gonna have to look over my lure selection a little bit better. Get the perfect one. <laughs>
You got one? Yeah. Are you going to tell me? Or? <laughs> nope. I was going to just kind of put it right in your face. No, looks like When it. it's a walleye. Well, the sauger. Nice. Oh my gosh. That it's is cool. The sauger queen. Spoons. Nice job. Look at this little guy. Kim and I always have a lot of, a lot of fun up here whenever I come and uh, have our little competitions, whether it be fishing or <laughs> cribbage or whatever. But that's what's kind of, there's a lot of fun when you come up to a lot of these you know, destinations like this is that, you know, you, you become really good friends with the, the lodge owners. And uh, we stay in touch even though, even uh, during the off season or when I'm traveling to different destinations. So I really enjoy Kim and, and Mike and uh, they're awesome owners at Birch Park. And, that's why I like to come back here. I mean, I've been back here nice multiple times, and you know, hopefully they'll keep having me back Beautiful. as long as Kim likes to get beat in different uh, avenues of competition. <laughs>